Hey, I'm Ted. Welcome to the Schoolie video. Today we're going to show you how to build the skylight for uh, Katie's short bus. All right. I guess uh, waiting for some parts to come in for the floor. And uh, while we're doing that, of course, uh, the reason the floor is a mess is because the skylights cracked and leaked. Uh, kind of went all the way down the walls and rotted up the floor. So I have to replace the skylights. And uh, Katie decided that she wanted one big one all the way down. So, I mean, sort of the nerve wracking thing of cutting out uh, this rib here and then welding in a piece of angle iron on each side to go all the way down to frame this out. So uh, I guess the first step is to get, get, get the big tarp on here now just to keep the rain out. Um, so I guess I gotta, I'm gonna cut these out, mark them, cut this middle one, rib right there, and then uh, weld in the angle iron, the sides. Good cutting. So cut out a piece of scrap angle iron because I want this to press up against here like that essentially and that way I can drill holes for screws to go up into the lip of the skylight. And so if I hold this against there, all of a sudden it's got a slight angle. And that way I can make the You can make the mark here at the right angle to cut that rib at. Okay, so we want to uh, get some pretty precise measurements here uh, in order to you know get the best fit. And the rib is actually angled in. It's actually shorter at the top than it is at the bottom. And so one of the trick things to try to get the measure of this. One of the tricky things to try to get the measure at the top is that you can't you have to put a bend in the tape and it's not so accurate. So what I like to do in these circumstances is I'll take the tape right at the top and I'll measure out 10 inches and put a mark here. Um, 10 because I can remember 10 better. And then go to the other side, put the measure, put the measuring tape at the top there, and then come over to the 10, the mark you put at 10 inches. And that's 46 inches, so I add 10 to it, and it's 56. That way it's pretty accurate right out in the bend in the tape. And the bottom one I can get, because so I can run the tape right by it, and see that we're 56 and an 8, so it's a little bit longer there. So I'm going to cut my uh, steel just a little bit long, you know, 16, 30 second, and I'll gradually grind it down so it's a nice tight fit. Uh, the other thing, I test, test my angle, just cut some... Uh, angles on a piece of wood and put it in there to test it first because scrap wood's cheaper than metal. Hopefully I can get it right so I'll scribe those on the metal and hopefully it'll fit. All right so this one fits and uh, fits pretty well on the other side maybe a little loose so I'm just gonna draw her on And then uh, cut outside the line instead of on and on. Okay, so we've got uh, little road magnets here holding this in place. And uh, i got the Forney flux core welder and see how it goes. Did a couple test welds on the piece that I cut out of there and a piece of scrap. It seems like seven for the feed and the voltage seems to be seems to be pretty good so tack it in place first and then finish her off all right so we're going to build the the box, and I like doing it, I like building double wall boxes for skylights. So this is going to be the inside box. 
get our Craig jig adjusted here, right? So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be dark here <laughs> trying to move the light, um, but you can kind of see the clamp on the far side. I put a block on the outside and clamp the block, so that's uh, the height that's gonna sit at. And uh, we put the furring strips below this in the and then the finished ceiling, and so that's kind of figure out how deep that's gonna sit. Um, but then I want to cut this out here so that it matches the contour. So I'm going to draw a line like that. And then use a jigsaw to cut that out and so that that bottom edge finishing will come and hook on the bottom of the skylight. All right, had to get some creative weights here to kind of hold it down because the wood's a little warped. I got a little bit of wobble this. Here, but so this is where it's going to sit on top. So I'm going to trace the top. So I'm going to cut another outer box to set down so that it will hold the uh, hold the skylight in place, push down, and then I can put uh, put some caulking down underneath here. So I'm just going to draw this line. The outer box is going to go. Okay, so this is the line that uh, Skylight set up from the top of the bus on. And so I need to put another piece on basically like that so that one that the, the top, instead of sitting flush, will actually have a little bit of an overhang. Um, that way it's tougher for water to go straight through and have to go up and over. And then the second thing is kind of going this way. I'll have another piece, the same piece will sort of allow the skylight to sit on top of the on top of the roof and have another lip there to help prevent water and so um, this is the, the bus falls away and has this angle so I took this piece of scrap and I just actually first time I just guessed on that angle of the table saw and cut through and it fit really well so now I need uh, basically this is three inches from the top of the roof to the top of the skylight um, but I want a one inch space at the top, so I need to cut this two inches to the short point. All right, we want the same arc uh, on the outside uh, that we had on the bottom of the inside. So I just centered these two and I'm going to draw the arc. that and since uh, from the top of the again the top of the bus uh, to the top of the skylight is two inches and I want a one inch gap so I have to rip this down to one inch above that line there because the whole thing needs to be three and a sixteenth And I want the one on the other side to be exactly the same, so we'll just trace this one. Oh! We'll hold it still better. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to glue it up. Get some uh, waterproof glue here. Although I hope I'm going to put some spire varnish on it, probably a little bit of epoxy, so I shouldn't see a lot of water anyway. But probably should have a inch and a quarter decking screws, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to go with this. Water will 
go down in between the two layers if you not if you don't glue it up really well and seal it with a good epoxy I think so I'm gonna be generous with the glue I have uh, my square set up at an inch so that I can just quickly set this in place all the way down All right, so I built the, the top, the lid, which is basically just uh, it's kind of a box. Uh, I used a Craig jig to do pocket holes in the end, and then I uh, used the little plugs, sanded them off. You can see that there. And so, but I want to make this, like I said, a double lip, so I'm going to put an inside, and this will make sense in a second. So I'm going to pre-drill some holes. Uh, in the lip, put those in, and then we can. Uh, I'll show you how to all piece this together, and then we can get some spar varnish on it to make it weather tight. All right, so here's what we got. Here's our design. So this lip here is built so that it actually can sit on top of uh, the roof of the bus, and this little part down here will extend down below to hopefully the finished edge of the to the bottom edge of the finished ceiling. Um, well, to the top edge, and so the finished ceiling will butt up against it and nail into the bottom of that. And then we have, this comes up at the top. And then rather than a flat edge where I just worry about water coming through, um, we've got a lip so it kind of goes in and up that way. And then the lid itself has a lip in it as well. So these interlock together and I've got weather stripping that I'll put here and on top, sort of a double layer. And uh, that'll sit on top and open like that. And once hinged down, it'll sit flat. Like that, and then uh, we'll get the plexiglass uh, and, and put that on the top, and we have a skylight. So, uh, our next step here is to get some spar varnish on it. Uh, I like spar varnish because for this application, especially because it's really thick, it's got a lot of solids in it, and offers a lot of protection for the wood, um, since it's going to be exposed to the elements. And, um, you know, like I said, I the way the price of lumber is today, I had a hard time justifying 40 bucks a board for the cedar. Probably would have cost, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars in uh, in materials just just for the cedar. This is a little bit less, so we'll see how it la should last. All right, hopefully it's not going to get too beat up up there. We can always refinish if we need to. But let's put on some spar varnish. So I have my quarter inch overhang on each side and I want to go halfway into the three quarter piece of pine. So that's a uh, quarter inch plus three eighths, which is five sixteenths, no, five eighths. So I uh, drew that line all the way around and then I put a mark every two inches and I'll put the screws in and I'm going to pre-drill them. Um, I want the holes bigger than the screws so that it allows a little bit of expansion. So. I'm not even sure what size the screws are, but I just sort of sized them up with this bit, a little bit bigger than that. And uh, I'll just drill all the way around. So put some masking tape around the sides, get some uh, window caulking, and we'll uh, put a bead around the, around the edge. We'll peel the protective film off. I'm going to pre-drill <clears throat> each of these holes, maybe I don't need to, but might as well be safe. I'm using these, uh, these roofing screws, it's got a little rubber washer there, and you just kind of want to compress those washers just a little bit, not too much. Ugh. 
No, I'm not sure if the <coughs> camera's picking it up, but as you screw that down, you can see the caulking sort of spread out a little bit. And that little uh, little squeeze out is good. It's let us know there's no air gaps in there. And that we're getting full water blockage. That's why I put that tape on the outside, so knew that squeeze out was going to come. All right, now we got the uh, got it all screwed on. Uh, now I was going to put the weather stripping on underneath. Now I've got to <clears throat> put some clamps on this to compress the weather stripping, and now I'll put the put the hinges on. Alright, just spun it around, <clears throat> clamped it up again, and we'll do the same thing and install the latches. Alright, we're going to be fairly liberal with the... <clears throat> Talking all the way around, we'll drop the skylight in. So there we go, this is our finished skylight. Uh, I went around the outside with a uh, another bead of caulk, um, you know, pushed it down and got a little bit of squeeze out and especially if there are any places there wasn't any squeeze out, put a little extra there and smooth it all off. So, um, but I like this design because the overhanging lip on the outside with the caulking there it won't leak uh, and then it's going to be tougher for water to get up, up and over that lip. So, so there we go. So I hope that was helpful if anybody uh, Trying to do that again, don't pay attention to my, my welding. I'm not sure how that, <laughs> I think it went okay, but I'm not a welder for sure. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and uh, appreciate you following along. So like, subscribe, do all those things you do, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.